I'm leaving you for a beautiful woman. I'll give a part of my retirement money to my new wife. I've talked this over with you. I can't help but laugh because I know how you feel. But I don't care. You'll regret it, though. You're just a sore loser. I never regret anything. I feel sorry for my husband. He doesn't understand anything. My name is Anna. I'm a 62-year-old housewife. I've been married to my husband Tom for almost 30 years. Our only son, Sam, is 28 and doing well in his job. Last year, he married a wonderful woman named Alina, and they're very happy together. With Sam grown up and Tom about to retire in a few months, we'll finally have time to relax together. I've been thinking about our past. Tom and I have had our arguments, but we've managed to stay together. I was wondering how we should handle Tom's retirement. But then Tom dropped a bombshell. He wants a divorce. He said this while we were eating. I thought I must have misunderstood or maybe my hearing is failing. I asked him to repeat himself. He said he wants a divorce and that he's tired of me. I was shocked. I asked for an explanation, but he just told me to be quiet and pack up my things. He plans to leave in three months and wants me gone by then. I couldn't believe it was happening so suddenly. I tried to protest, but he wasn't interested. He handed me the divorce papers, which he had secretly kept in a drawer. I thought I'd spend the rest of my life with Tom, so his decision was a huge shock. I was left speechless. Tom said he doesn't love me anymore and doesn't want to live with me because he finds me old and unattractive. I was devastated by his harsh words. Even though I don't have romantic feelings for Tom anymore, I still care about him because we've been together for so long. How could he say something so cruel? As a housewife, I haven't worked outside the home, so I have no way to support myself if Tom leaves me. I'm stuck. Tom didn't seem to care. After finishing the divorce papers, he left them in front of me and went out. Tom has always been a bit distant. He never helped with chores or said kind things. But that was common in our generation. He used to tell me that when we got married, I would take care of the home and he would protect it. I had plans for retirement, like traveling with him, but now he wants a divorce. I felt abandoned and upset. Even if we do get divorced, I want to discuss it thoroughly and understand his reasons. Tom didn't come home that night, so I couldn't sleep. On Saturday morning, when he returned, he quickly went to his room and told me not to disturb him because he was tired. His behavior was unusual. He's acted like this before during arguments, but never like this without a reason. I needed to know why he suddenly wanted a divorce. Tom finally woke up late in the afternoon, took a bath, and we were able to talk at dinner. I told him I couldn't accept a divorce just because he's tired of me and doesn't love me. That's something young couples might say. I wanted to know the real reason behind his decision. Tom told me that he can't stand being with me anymore because I'm old and unattractive. He kept saying hurtful things, insisting that he's been patient but has reached his limit. He said he's a gentleman for putting up with me, but he can't continue living with me. Whenever I tried to talk to Tom, he just repeated the same harsh comments. He wouldn't give me a reasonable explanation for the divorce or his decision to leave. I told him that without a good reason, I can't decide what to do about the divorce or leaving the house. I've put up with his behavior because I was his wife, but I can't tolerate his arrogance now that we're becoming strangers. Tom ignored my attempts to discuss things and just lay on the sofa watching TV. He told me to pack my bags and leave, and then he completely stopped talking to me. He ignored everything I said, avoided me, and started eating out or buying convenience foods instead of the meals I prepared. I tried to talk to him on different days, but he refused to listen. Even when Tom came home from work and saw me, he wouldn't engage with me. Tom would act like I wasn't even there and spend the whole day ignoring me. I wondered if there was any way to fix this situation. While I was thinking about it, I got a call from my son. He said, Hi mom, I'm planning to celebrate your birthday with Selena. We're thinking of going out for sushi with dad and the four of us. How does that sound? I started crying as soon as I heard Sam's voice. It felt like a heavy weight had been lifted. Sam was surprised and asked why I was crying. I told him that Tom asked for a divorce and that it didn't make any sense. Sam was upset and said he would come over to talk to his dad. That night, Sam arrived at our house and confronted Tom. He asked, Dad, what's going on? Why are you asking for a divorce? We don't understand your reasons. Tom was taken aback by Sam's visit and asked, Why are you here? Sam explained, I heard everything from Mom. We don't understand why you want a divorce. 
Tom looked at me and said, You told Sam. You're the one who's been avoiding me and refusing to talk. If we had communicated, we could have worked things out. Sam was upset and said, Dad, I don't agree with you. I don't understand why you want a divorce. Please take your time and explain. Thanks to Sam's insistence, Tom finally sat down to talk. However, Tom stubbornly refused to give a real reason, saying only that he was tired of the situation. I was frustrated with Tom's attitude, especially in front of Sam. Sam was also upset, feeling that Tom no longer cared about our family time. I reminded Tom of the times we used to travel as a family when Sam was a child. This made Tom go quiet. I showed him a photo album with pictures from Sam's childhood and our family moments, hoping it would bring back happy memories. Tom just put the album aside and said, Enough. I'm not changing my mind. I'm going to divorce you, and I don't care if I never see Sam again. His words shocked me. I realized we couldn't have a serious conversation anymore. I agreed to separate for now. Tom said, We're not divorcing right now. I told him that if we do divorce, I should get half of his retirement savings because I've been with him for 30 years. Tom was upset but reluctantly agreed because he knew I wouldn't sign the divorce papers without that agreement. We separated, and Sam invited me to stay at his house. He said Lena had agreed to this because she couldn't manage on her own and that Tom would come to appreciate me once we were apart. I thanked Sam for his support. Tom left the house looking unhappy, and I packed my bags and went to stay with Sam. When I arrived at Sam's place, I apologized to Lena for any inconvenience, but she reassured me that it was no problem. Don't worry about it. Please stay as long as you need, Lena said. She's a wonderful wife, and after the hellish time I had with Tom, Staying with my kind son and his wife felt like a peaceful and happy escape. I was reluctant to divorce Tom because I suspected there were other reasons behind his behavior. I wanted to investigate, but I needed money for that, so I started working. I was prepared to pay for the investigation myself. I didn't want to trouble my son with my problems. Plus, even after the divorce, it's better to have a job. Since Tom had been treating me poorly, I needed to plan for my future. I used to have a bookkeeping license, so I looked for part-time work and found a company that valued my 12 years of experience in the industry. I got the job and now needed to find a place to live alone and investigate Tom. Sam said, Mom, you don't need to find a place on your own. Lena and I both agreed that you could live with us. If you want, we'd be happy to have you stay with us. Lena agreed, adding with a smile, it would be great if you stayed with us. I was surprised and unsure, but Sam and Lena's offer was kind. My son and his wife were happy to see me and I was surprised to learn that Lena was pregnant. She had planned to tell me about the pregnancy on my birthday, but I was thrilled to hear the news early and excited about the arrival of my grandchild. Given this joyful news, I felt even more determined to end things with Tom quickly. I hired a detective agency to investigate and I received the results within a week. I was concerned about how fast the investigation was completed, but the evidence was clear. Tom had been unfaithful. The investigation revealed that Tom had gone to a hotel with a young woman and had brought her to his house, where he stayed with her until morning. It seemed that the separation had caused him to lower his guard and engage in an affair. I confronted Tom with the evidence. He was surprised to see me and asked, What are you doing here? I told him I was ready for the divorce. His expression brightened, and he handed me the divorce papers with a smile. However, he added, by the way, I'm not giving you half of my retirement savings. I expected this, knowing you probably intended to give the money to his young partner. Tom was initially shocked when I showed him the evidence of his affair. He tried to act defensively, saying he was leaving me for a younger, attractive woman and would be giving part of his retirement money to her. He added that he didn't care how I felt and believed I'd regret the divorce. He also claimed he never regretted anything and seemed indifferent to the situation. I felt sorry for Tom, as he clearly didn't understand anything. I finished filling out the divorce papers and handed them back to him. Tom continued to brag about his new partner, who liked older men and thought he was confident and attractive. Once the divorce was finalized, I began my revenge. I instructed my lawyer to demand half of Tom's retirement savings and alimony as part of the property division. I also sent a certified letter to Tom's workplace, where he was about to retire. According to my lawyer, Tom was furious when his colleagues looked at him coldly due to my actions. His retirement celebration ended up being very low-key, although Tom had resisted giving me a share of the retirement money. 
I made sure he would have to comply through the lawyer. I was prepared to go to court if necessary, but Tom eventually paid me the full amount of his retirement savings and compensation in a lump sum to settle the matter. However, Tom faced more trouble later on. A few months after our divorce, Sam received a call from Tom. Tom had tried to remarry his affair partner, but she had left him just before the wedding. She also wanted to open a restaurant, which had been her dream, and asked Tom to use his retirement money to fund it. Tom borrowed money to help her because the restaurant location was in high demand. The partner pressured Tom to sign a contract quickly. A few days later, after receiving his retirement payment, Tom attempted to withdraw the money to pay off the debt, but it was gone. The restaurant location he wanted still had a for rent sign, and Tom had been completely scammed. Tom contacted the police, but even months later, there were no updates or arrests. While it's a shame that Tom ended up in this situation, I don't feel sorry for him since his problems stem from his affair. I'm focusing on working hard at my job and taking care of my son, his wife, and my future grandchildren. If Tom had not had the affair, he could have retired comfortably and enjoy his retirement years. Instead, his foolish choices led to his downfall. I believe it's better for me to be with my son's family than to have spent my life with a troubled husband. I hope Tom's former partner can find peace and enjoy her life. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel and see you in the next video.